Hello YouTubers, this is going to be an update to my homemade mid-drive electric bicycle. So before I get into the bicycle, I first want to show you the, the homemade bicycle stand uh, that I built. This is using a portable workbench that I got from Harbor Freight Tools. And clamped to it, I have this piece of scrap wood. And I put this flange on here and connected these pipes and so this is the actual stand and then I have a pipe clamp that I also got from Harbor Freight Tools on the end. And this is what holds the bicycle in place. I got some cushions in there just to protect the finish of the bicycle. And it's real real stable and this is good to have because it allows me to adjust my gears or if I have to run the motor or something like that then I can do all that um, with the bicycle off the ground. It's kind of a pain to flip the bicycle upside down in the handlebars, so this is a lot better for doing adjustments. So now I'm going to come over here and show you the upgrades that I did to this bicycle. So the first thing that I did was the drive system has changed. So um, I used to have a homemade shaft adapter for this MY1018Z motor, um, and that was working pretty good, but uh, it was kind of starting to get worn out a little bit, so I ended up buying, they actually have a shaft adapter from statininc.com that fits exactly onto the motor uh, with the correct key shaft and everything. And so I got one of those and I also replaced the 14 tooth freewheel uh, with a 13 teeth ACS uh, freewheel sprocket. This allowed me to change the size of the gear in the back. so. Smaller gears means there's less chain and be a little bit more efficient. Now it's really tough to find a 52 tooth sprocket that fits this five hole bolt pattern. So what I had to do was take an old 44 tooth one that I had and then I got this 52 tooth chain ring from the bike shop and then I just bolted them together. So I got that centered really good and so that creates the 52 tooth uh, sprocket. So it's 13 to 52 teeth, 1 to 4 uh, gear ratio there. Um, also what you'll notice is that I no longer have a freewheeling crank. So instead of the freewheeling crank, what I did was I, I separated it and took off the, uh, the chain rings on that. And I'm using a, um, instead of using the cup and cones, this is actually one unit that threads directly into the bottom bracket. So it's a bottom bracket. Uh, it's a cartridge uh, that goes in there, and so that's one whole unit. This is 206 millimeters, and I got this from Sick Bike Parts. And the reason why I got it is because there's a keyed shaft that's in here, and you can see the key shaft uh, right there. So that fits a key, and that holds this freewheel adapter. And this you can also get from Sick Bike Parts, and also Staten Inc. has it as well and it's held in place by these set screws and the key that's inside there. So this is what the, the freewheel itself is connected to. The reason why I'm not using the freewheel crank is because with the freewheel crank I had before, it would never seat correctly right on the spindle, on the, the square spindle I have on that. And so because of that, I would have these sprockets would kind of sway side to side and there was so much movement that it would keep knocking the chain off. So that's why I decided to go to this instead. Um, this, I don't have hardly any movement side to side. There's no wobble on this anymore. And that's why I decided to go with this kind of system. So if I have to take the crank off for some maintenance and things like that, uh, it's not gonna affect this at all and the wobble. Now behind this, I have three chain rings. So in fact, the three chain rings originally came off of this crank right here. Kind of broke those off and then I drilled holes to match the five bolt hole pattern and that's how they're connected. So there's three sprockets there. Um, I've got a uh, 28 tooth one uh, that's there and then there's uh, I believe there's a 38 and a 48 uh, that's on there and those are the, the uh, sprockets, a number of teeth I should say, uh, inside there. Now in between I have, uh, I made my own washers, spacers that are inside here. So these are some old uh, number 
25 sprockets that I had before, number 25 chain, and I basically cut all the gear part off and just left the center part there, and so I ended up creating my own spacers. So that way it would fit the five bolt hole pattern, and there's enough spacing in between those front sprockets and the drive sprocket that's here. So that's what they look like uh, inside there, if you can see that. And that's the main upgrade that I did to the, uh, the drive system. So I've got three sprockets in front, and I have seven in the back. Uh, the smallest one is 14 teeth, and it goes up to, as you can see, the 34, 34 teeth. That's the same one that I had in the uh, previous video. Next, I want to talk about the battery and controller. I talked about that a little bit in the previous video, but it was kind of hard to hear because of all the wind, so I'm going to explain it a little bit more in detail this time. I'm using a popcorn pan. I usually use these for camping. found it at the Goodwill store, and that's attached directly to this uh, rear rack that I had. It's bolted in. And I have Velcro inside, and that's what keeps the batteries in place. So normally, I would have battery here, battery here, uh, three batteries, one on top, and that's why I have the Velcro here to hold the other battery, and then I put a zip, usually like a bungee cord around there just to hold it all in place securely. And I have these Anderson connectors, and they're big like this because they fit the, the battery output that's a real thick gauge wire that's there. And I had to solder it to the uh, controller, and you can see those coming out. They're different gauge, and so I had to solder them together, and then I got some shrink wrap around there to make it secure. The controller itself is different from the previous video. My old one finally died on me. And I want to mention something about the throttle. So if you've got a throttle like this that has an indicator on it, then it's going to have four wires coming out. So there's three wires that fit into the throttle connector of the controller box. But then you'll notice there's a, sometimes some, certain throttles, not all of them, some of them will have an extra set of wires coming out, and usually it might be labeled as indicator. This is what you connect the fourth wire to. It goes into the positive connector here. You don't need anything, the negative one. And by doing this, when you flip the switch, switch I have here for the system, what you're going to notice is when I flip that, you see the light come on, and that indicates that the, the power system is turned on and it's getting power. So I like having this kind of throttle because that way it tells me if the whole system's turned down or off or not just for safety. And so that is the, the whole system that I have here. Everything all fits nice inside this pan. And that's the same one I had in the previous video. So now what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on the throttle so you can see how the system's working. So here's the throttle turned on, and you can see how this works. The motor drives the drive sprocket, but you notice the pedals are remaining stationary, so this works exactly the same as if you'd have a, a freewheel crank. So it turns these front ones, and again, I can change gears to match riding conditions. And I can change gears back there, so I really like having a mid-drive system because you're not stuck to one gear ratio. You can change to match different riding conditions, and it has power to go up hills. Of course, it'll be going pretty slow, but anyway, it's got power to drive up those. So in some future videos, I'm going to be taking it out on the road so you can see it in use, but I just wanted to give you just an update uh, for right now uh, since it's in my side of my garage and there's no wind. Thank you very much for watching. And look for my future videos with uh, riding on the road. Thanks. Bye.